In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So we continue with day two. Now, my child, listen to your mother. Know that I love you very much, and would like you to see your soul filled with my own divine seas. So here, Our Lady wants to see the, uh, a reflection of her in us. Uh, not, not, not just a reflection, but she, she wants us to possess what she possesses. These seas of mine are swollen. They want to pour themselves out. But in order for them to do this, you must empty yourself of your human will so that the divine will may take its sec second step over you, constituting itself its principle of life in your soul. So the second step is to empty ourselves of our human will. Uh, again, uh, in I think it's in volume 11, uh, there you have to go through uh, the, the baptism of victimhood. Uh, it's right at the very beginning. I think it's in, uh, on March 8th and March 13th, right at the beginning of volume 11. It says that uh, this baptism, baptism of victimhood uh, is not like the baptism of the uh, victimhood of the saints. Uh, the saints' victimhood was um, basically uh, suffering in, in bed. You know, uh, that's what the saints had to go through. Our victimhood is to not want to do our human will ever again. So I, I never want to brush my teeth in the human will anymore. I, I, I only want to brush my teeth in the divine will. I never want to walk in the human will anymore. I want to walk in the divine will. I never want to do anything in the human will anymore. I want to do it all in the divine will. So this is um, the victimhood that God is calling us to, yet it is, it is the victimhood of joy. Come, divine will, come walk in my walking. Come, divine will, come breathe in my breathing. breathing. Come, divine will, come beat in my heart beating. Come, divine will. So what we're doing was we're always calling upon the divine will. So this victimhood, you know, isn't uh, uh, the victimhood that we have seen before. Uh, it is the victimhood of uh, the baptism of fire, as Jesus says to Louisa, uh, is to want to only live one with God. And that's the second step. He says, Our Lady says, empty yourself of your human will uh, so that the divine will reigns. And now think about that. Uh, how much joy are you going to have 
uh, in, in never doing your human will again? How much joy are you going to have in only doing the divine will? I mean, think this is, uh, this is why the people of the divine will are different than uh, the rest of the people. Uh, when, if you're really striving to follow Our Lady, to live in the divine will, you're joy-filled, you're peaceful, you're happy. Uh, While well, the rest of the world is in bitter complaining about all the terrible things that are going on. Now, yes, we fall into that sin often, but what will happen is those passions of complaining, of, of worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, uh, will slowly disappear. The more that we are attentive to listening to Our Lady, the more that we, are, we empty ourselves of our human misery. Uh, how wonderful it is that our God uh, has given us the opportunity um, to obtain this. Again, we have to work at it. Uh, if, if you can't say fiat, uh, then you're going you're gonna to still be negative. If you can't say fiat, you're still going to be complaining. If you can't say fiat, you're still going to have worry, fear, anxiety. Uh, what, what does fiat mean? Let it be done as you say. Lord, I let it be done as you say. So you're, uh, no matter what you're doing, everything is a fiat. Everything is let it be done as you say. So you empty yourself of your human will so the divine will may take its second step over us, constituting itself as principle of life in our soul. It, the divine will may call the attention of the celestial Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit to pour themselves out upon you with their overflowing seas, these divine seas of, of, of love and power and, and uh, uh, wisdom. Uh, our, our God wants us uh, to become like him. See, we, in baptism we receive the image of God. The divine will, we receive the likeness of God. On earth as the saints possess in heaven. So uh, what we are looking for, what we're striving for, is this, this um, uh, abundant life that Jesus promises us. It's not a human saintly life we're filled with passions, but it's a, it's a divine life filled with peace, joy, and happiness of God. So uh, again, we want this principle of life of the divine will reigning in us. So the second step <clears throat> is emptying of ourself of our human will. <coughs> but in order to do this, God, triune, the triune God, wants to find their own divine will in us. Because God does not want to entrust their seas of divine power, divine wisdom, uh, and of divine love, uh, divine beauty in your human will. That's uh, that's not where it's going to be. We have to, we have to surrender our human will so the divine will can reign in us. Child more dear to me, listen to your mama. Place your hand upon your heart and tell me your secrets. Okay, so uh, this is a, this is a, um, we have to obey. So again, we place our hand over our heart and tell us, tell our lady our secrets. How many times have you been unhappy? How many times have you been tortured? How many times have you been embittered because you did your human will? Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Every time you go to confession, it's because you are unhappy, you're tortured, you're embittered, be embittered because you're living in your human will. That's, that's the reason for the sacrament, is to, is to be free of this. And, and all of us, I mean, if we're really trying to live in the divine will, confession must be a weekly thing. You know, it... it you have to go through your life. How have I failed? And it's not just to confess your sins and to continue to live in your misery, but to uh, uh, have a firm purpose of amendment to not sin again. I mean, it, it, we have to look at our lives. And he says, you know, uh, our lady asks, how many times have you been to confession? How many times have you, I mean, weekly, how many times a, a day, a week, have you fallen into this misery? She says, <clears throat> Know that you have been you have cast out a divine will and you have fallen into the abyss of evils. It wants wanted to render you pure and holy, happy and beautiful, of enchanting beauty, and you 
by doing your own human will, wage war against the divine will. And in sorrow, you cast the divine will out of its dear dwelling. That is your soul. So again, our God wants us to uh, uh, allow the divine will back in. Uh, now, the, the great thing is we trust... Uh, that, I mean, we, well, we, we know that uh, uh, Adam fell. Adam produced original sin. And all of us are in that category. All of us are sinners. All of us uh, are living in our human misery. So our God is offering us, and he tells Louisa this in some place. He says uh, that uh, you know, the, the ones that have the most difficult time uh, is us uh, with the divine will. Uh, Adam lost it. It was gone. Jesus comes and Our Lady come to redeem mankind. Uh, Jesus redeems, Our Lady co-redeems with Christ, the, the new Adam and the new Eve. 2,000 years later, they have a newborn, Louisa Picaretta, who has the divine will. And now is the time where God is asking souls, that's us, to be linked to Louisa so that uh, uh, the kingdom can be established. So Jesus says that we have the hardest time because we know of the divine will, yet we're living in our human will. We know we have to surrender completely, yet we're, we are filled with miseries. So it's, it's the going back and forth of, of living, trying to live in the divine will and going to confession, trying to live in the divine will and going to confession. Uh, what, what is spectacular is, Jesus says, the souls after us will have it easier. Because when we are linked to Louisa, we're going to bring the kingdom with Louisa. This is, that's her job. And God is offering us this job with Louisa to bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven so that everyone after us will live in the divine will. They won't have the memory of the human will. They won't have the, uh, the, the life of the human will. So he says, Jesus says that we have the most difficult time yet. He says throughout all the centuries from now on, uh, the souls will remember Louisa and those linked to Louisa who formed the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. So our job is, is very, very, very difficult. And what God has to do is he has to weed out the weak. He has to weed them out. Uh, why, why, is the, why did God talk about the sheep and the goats? Uh, I will separate the sheep and the goats. Why? The sheep are stronger than the goats. The goats have to go into the caves when it's cold or they'll freeze to death. The sheep can stay out on the field. God wants the strong. Uh, what's happened over the last 40 years, uh, the, you know, with the, with the great, uh, you know, uh, difficulties in the church. Uh, God has been looking for the faithful and obedient Catholics. Why? He, 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 Adam was a Catholic. Adam had the universal life. And what Adam did was he lost it. So Jesus comes to the earth to start the Catholic faith again. Why? He wants us to have this universal life. So he's looking for faithful and obedient Catholics. Okay, who has not compromised? That's what God is looking for. And if you have compromised, who has gone to confession? And with a firm purpose of amendment, try to live that, that Catholic life again. And that's what the Lord is looking for. Who, who really is Catholic? And he says, now I can give to them this universal life, the fullness of the life, the abundant life. That, that Jesus wants us to possess, that Adam lost. So, uh, I, again, uh, our job is to embrace this gift. Our job is to be faithful. Our job is to be obedient. And uh, uh, what, what the Lord is looking for, what the Lord is, is praying that we do, is we be strong. So, he puts us through difficulties. He brings us, you know, uh, uh, good and holy, saintly people who don't know Louisa. And we, we go to these people and we say to these people, well, I heard this. And the people say, well, that's not true. And people leave the faith. People leave, excuse me, the divine will. Go to people who have read Louisa. Go to people who have studied Louisa. Go to people who understand Louisa. And those are the people you should ask questions to. Because as Our Lady says, I'm going to teach you things of heaven, no longer the things of earth. The saints taught us things of, of earth, saintly things, good things, holy things. This, Our Lady says, these writings are, 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 this is a book of gold. 
It's, it's not a, an ordinary book. Jesus says, out of all the books that are written, the divine will, these books of the divine will, are the only ones that will transform a soul. They will transform the face of the earth. Now, you present that to a person who hasn't read Louisa, and they'll say, that's complete nonsense. That's complete nonsense. And it would, I would say the same thing. But if you've read Louisa, you go, my goodness, this is something that is beyond uh, what the saints have said. I mean, it's, it's, it's a way of heaven, no longer of earth, as, as Our Lady is teaching us. So what the Lord has to do is he has to test every soul. Are you going to be, with a, with a, with a light wind coming in, are you going to be uh, able to endure it? With a strong wind, are you going to be able to endure it? You know, so God has to test us. What do we believe? And, I, and I've told people, if you don't believe it, get away from it. I mean, either it's true or it's a or, or it's diabolical lie. Either this is true from heaven, are they is really speaking to us? Jesus is really speaking to us through Louisa, or it's not. So uh, again, th that's that's what we we're called to do. We're we're, we're called to uh, uh, be strong. And again. Uh, God has to weed everybody out. He, do, he does not want the weak. Uh, we're going to have to uh, think about it. If you're going to go to war, uh, you, you don't want somebody that can't lift a sword. You know, what good is that person dragging a sword behind him, you know, and going into battle? Uh, God looks for the strong. I mean, the, the generals look for the strong. The war that's coming is a war of love. Uh, Jesus tells Louisa, I am not waging a war of blood, it's a war of love, and mankind will not be able to push me away. This fire from heaven, this third purification, is a fire of love, symbolized by the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. God is looking for the strongest to endure it. So again, if you're going to confession each week, if you are you know, reading, studying, putting this into practice, God is strengthening you. Our Lady is strengthening you. Uh, but if you get to the point where you say, uh, I really don't, I, I really don't want this, God says, fine. You know, I, I'm looking for the ones that I can depend on, those that are the ones that are linked to Louisa. And that's, that's what we're going through right now. And again, don't be, don't be discouraged. Uh, find a priest who has read, studied, and put into practice Louisa. I know some priests that say you don't need to read Louisa, that you can live in the divine will separate from Louisa. I know some people that have said that uh, everybody has lived in the divine will, uh, that uh, uh, and they didn't know it. Well, Jesus says to to know this is to is to be attentive. Our Lady says this: study this, listen, listen to these lessons. So, okay, so uh, listen, child of my heart. It is a sorrow for your mama not to see the son of the divine fiat in you but the darkness of the night of your human will. Come, but come courage, be courageous. If you promise to place your will into my hands, the human will into my hands, I, the Blessed Virgin Mary, your celestial mother, will take you in my arms. So, with courage, we take our human will and put it on Our Lady's hands. I surrender my human will to you, Our Lady. I believe what St. Louis de Montfort said to Jesus through Mary. And now I give my human will to you, Mary. This is, this is what's so spectacular about this is this is, the, if you want to say, the second half of the St. Louis de Montfort consecration. The first half is, is you know, everybody should do this. You know, totus tuus of the uh, St. John Paul II. What, what our God is calling us now to do is to go to the second half. Who has been faithful? Who has been obedient? Okay. He says, I'm looking for those souls so I can give them the second part. And that's this, that's the Virgin Mary and the King of the Divine Will. Mary says, I, the Blessed Virgin Mary, will place you upon my knees. And I, the Blessed Virgin Mary, will reorder the life of the Divine Will in you. Who does it? Mary. We don't do it. Who does it? Our Lady. Total surrender to her. So that you too, after so many tears, will form my smile, my feast. The, the smile and feast of the most holy trinity, which Our Lady possesses. Day three. My child, listen to me. It is the heart of a mother that speaks to you. And as I see that you want to listen to me, my heart rejoices and feels the sure hope that my child will take possession of the kingdom of the divine will. 
which I, the Blessed Virgin Mary, possess with my, within my maternal heart to give to my children. Uh, again, the scapular is a sign of being a child of Mary. So if you, you know, the scapular is a sign. Um, if you're wearing the scapular, praying the rosary, you will. Uh, it's a sign that you belong to Mary, and she is going to give you the kingdom of the divine will. Therefore, be attentive in listening to me and write all my words within your heart. Memorize this book. That's what she's saying. Memorize this. Uh, it, 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 you know, there's so many things out there. I, I know the youth today can sing every song that's on the radio. They memorized it. They hear it over and over and over again, and they know it. If this is the most important book, a book of gold, a, go, a book from heaven, to, way to, learn, to learn the way of, of heaven, no longer the way of earth, why don't we memorize it? She says it. Write all my words within your heart so that you may always meditate on them and mold your life according to my teachings. So again, we, we, have, to, we have to look. What do we know? You know, everybody knows the Pledge of Allegiance. Everybody knows the uh, Star Spangled Banner. Everybody knows the, the Happy Birthday song. Uh, what we're supposed to do is know this. I mean, we have to prove to Jesus that we love this, that we, we want this. And, and so she says... Uh, write these words, my words, in your heart, that you may always meditate on them, mold them your life according to my teachings. Listen, and see, again, what we've done, you know, with the saints, St. Saint Francis, St. Saint, Saint Dominic, St. Benedict, you know, the great saints of the church, great mystics of the church, we've, you know, followed their prayer, their life. Our Lady now says, I want you to follow my life. I want you to follow my son's life. It's not, it's not a saintly life, a good life, a holy life. It's a divine life. And that's, that's what we're called to do. So she says, listen, my child. As soon as the divinity smiled and celebrated my conception, the supreme fiat took the third step over my little humanity, tiny, tiny as I was. Uh, the divine will endowed me with divine reason. See, that's the other thing, too. As you begin to read the divine will, study the divine will, Our Lady gives you divine reason. And, and what is divine reason? Uh, it's fiat. Let it be done as you say. It's, it's complete docility, complete submission, complete joy, peace, and happiness. And moving all creation and feast, the divine will made me, Our Lady, recognized by all created things as their queen. Mary, mother and queen. This, again, this is why we crown her uh, in May. Uh, she is our queen, our mother. All creation recognize in me the life of the divine will. We want people to recognize Our Lady. I mean, that's why you have outdoor statues. Not only for you, but to proclaim, Mary is my mother, my queen. Why do you crown her? You can see, I can see the Protestants driving by, the, the Buddhists, the Hindus, the, the Muslims, the Jews. Going, why do you put flowers on her head? She is our queen. And, and she is our mother. Uh, again, how happy that must make Jesus. Again, the devil is infuriated. Uh, and, you know, he'll cause you know, people to be angry with you, uh, misunderstand you, reject you, persecute you, spit upon you. Uh, but Jesus is happy. You recognize my mother as queen. So Our Lady says, And they recognize in me the life of the divine will, and the whole universe prostrated itself at my feet, even though I, Mary, was tiny, yet not, and not yet born. Singing my praises, the sun made feast for me and smiled at me with its, divine, its light. The heavens celebrated me with their stars, which smiled at me with their meek and sweet twinkling, and offered themselves as, radiant, as a radiant crown upon my head. The sea made feast for me, Mary, with its waves rising and falling peacefully. In some, there was not one created thing that did not unite itself to the smile and to the feast of the Most Holy Trinity. All accepted my dominion, except mankind, my rule, my command. They all felt honored because after so many centuries from the time of Adam, that Adam had lost his command and dominion as king by withdrawing from the divine will, 
All of creation found their queen in me. So here we see that uh, Adam fell because of Eve. Now the new Eve, Mary, is, is now pronounced queen, king, queen of, of heaven and earth. And, uh, 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 and, and Jesus comes as king, king of kings and lord of lords. All creation proclaim me, our lady, queen of heaven and earth. And that's what we want. Uh, you know, if you have a if you have a uh, uh, a statue or a lady, make sure that you have flowers for her. And and again, the church says no plastic flowers. You know, you can't put plastic flowers on the altar. Did you know that? It has to be. And I've gone to churches and I've seen these wonderful plastic flowers. It, 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 the church says real flowers. It, it, it basically it forbids plastic flowers. Uh, and so what we want is we want, uh, I remember when I as a kid uh, during May, uh, the statue of Our Lady always had flowers, 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 all, all, all of month of May in honor of Our Lady. And, and again, we look at the times we're living in. The families are falling apart. Everything's falling apart. I think because we've forgotten Jesus and Mary. My dear child, you must know that when the divine will reigns in the soul, the divine will does not know how to do small things, only great. <clears throat> the divine will wants to centralize all its divine qualities in the fortunate creature. And everything that came from its omnipotent fiat surrounds the soul and remains obedient to her wishes. <clears throat> so here we have uh, the divine will wants to reign in us and uh, again, you cannot imagine what God has planned for those souls that are one with Our Lady. <clears throat> you, you look at your, you know, as Catholics, we have been given the, the fullness of faith. Uh, as Catholics, we've been given Our Lady. As Catholics, we've been given Our Lord in the Eucharist. As Catholics, we've been given the Holy Father. What does God expect of us is, is, a, is a lot but he is also going to give us a lot. I mean, it's not by chance that we're Catholic. We've been called by God to live this Catholic life. Uh, and again, so be Catholic. Make sure that you have a, a statue of, of Jesus, of Mary. <clears throat> and uh, even, even a little uh, image of Louisa because uh, she's the newborn. Uh, and, and again, our God wants us to recognize uh, this newborn that our Jesus and Mary taught. You can see how Our Lady is teaching Louisa. And, and again, Louisa embraced everything that Our Lady is saying, and we have to too. <clears throat> what did the divine fiat not give to me, Our Lady? It gave me, Our Lady, everything. It gave heaven and earth. Uh, heaven and earth were in my power. I felt dominator of all, even of my creator, so here it is. She is the dominator of everything, the queen of everything, even of God. I mean, that's Mary is the mother of God, Theotokos. The Protestants say, oh, she's just, she's just Mary, the mother of Jesus. Well, Jesus is the mother of, Jesus is God. The, she is, and, and she held Jesus, taught Jesus, directed Jesus, led Jesus carried Jesus. Um, and you can see how she was the dominator even of God. Not, not in a negative way, but in a, in, a in a beautiful, positive way. Now listen, my child. Listen to your mother. Oh, how my heart grieves in seeing you weak, being poor, without true dominion over yourself. See, we don't have dominion. Again, that's why we go to confession each week. Uh, fears, doubts, apprehensions are things that dominate you. I, 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 most women that I know uh, tell me that they have to worry. This is my job. It is to worry of my children. And, and it's not true. Worry says to Jesus, I don't trust you. Worry says to Jesus, you are not Lord. I have to worry about this. And again, it's, it's an insult to God if you're worrying. Fears, doubts, apprehensions, all things that dominate you are all miserable rags over your human will. We have to get to the point of saying to God, 
I trust, not only I trust in you, as St. Faustina taught us, Jesus, I trust in you, but now, Jesus, come reign in me. Come breathe in my breathing. Come beat in my heart beating. Be Lord of every aspect, aspect of my life. Every thought, every word, every deed, everything that I have, I give to you. I give my health, my, health, my house, my wealth, my, my job, my uh, spirituality, my prayers. I, give, I surrender everything to you, Jesus, that you be Lord of everything. You and Mary be Lord and Queen of everything in my life. I mean, God, God does not want you to be in charge of your life. Look what you've done so far. Every week, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. You know, what God wants is he wants to be Lord of your life. Our Lady wants to be queen of your life. He wants to, as Our Lady says, free you of the miserable rags of your human will. So do you know why? Because the life of the divine will intact is missing in you. The divine life, which putting to flight all the evils of the human will, may make you happy and fill you again uh, with, as Adam with the goods uh, that the divine will possesses. Ah, uh, with a firm resolution, you decide no longer to give life to your human will. Uh, again, at Holy Communion, this is the perfect time. With a firm resolution, uh, decide no longer to give life to your human will. You will feel all the evils die within you. All the goods of God come back to life in you. And then everything will smile at you. The divine will will take its third step also in you. And all creation will make feasts for the newly arrived in the kingdom of the divine will. So the third step, and again, uh, I would say at, at Holy Communion, is to, to decide no longer to give life to your human will. Again, that's the third step that God is looking for. So my child, tell me, will you not listen to me? Do you, And again, these three steps so far are, are, are very, very important. Will you not listen to me? Do you, give, do you give me your word that you will never do your will ever again? And our, our response would be, yes, I give you my word that I will never ever do my will again, human will again. We can say that to Our Lady. And also say, and I will go to confession each week because I know I am weak. Our Lady says, Know that if you do this, I will never leave you. Okay, so some people says, well, I can't promise that because I know I'm, I'm not going to do that. You know, hey, dork, look at it. It's very easy. She says, do this. Know that if you do this, I will never leave you. So you say, I, will, I do not want to do my human will again. I don't want to do it. God has to hear this. Our lady has to hear this. And then what she says, if you say this, if you do this, I will never leave you. I will place myself as guardian of your soul. I, Mary, will envelop you with my light so that no one may uh, dare to disturb my child. Now think about that. The, the people that agitate you, the people that uh, are annoy you, the people that frustrate you, I myself will envelop you with my light so that no one may dare to disturb my child. You become peaceful. Uh, uh, amid all those that are trying to disturb you. I, the Blessed Virgin Mary, will give you my rule so that you may rule over all the evils of your human will. So think about this. All she says is, do you promise me? And if you promise me, I promise you this. I will never leave you. No one will disturb you. You will, you will, you will have my rule and all your evils will leave. So, at communion time, I mean, this is the perfect time you know, talk to Jesus and Mary. Again, Holy Communion, when you go to Holy Communion, uh, it's, it's, Jesus has flesh of her flesh, bone of her bone, blood of her blood. Uh, when you go to Holy Communion, you can talk to Jesus and Mary. Our Lady always brings us to Jesus in the Eucharist. Jesus in the Eucharist always brings us to Our Lady. Day four. My child, if you knew how much I love to hold you tightly into my arms, leaning on my maternal heart to let you hear the celestial secrets of the divine fiat. And if you sigh so much to listen to me, those are my sighs that echo in your heart. So again, it's not even our prayer. I mean, it's everything is a grace. 
If you're wearing the scapular, Our Lady has put that on you. If you're not wearing the scapular, you're refusing to have Our Lady put the scapular on you. It's, it's, it's really true. Our Lady says, I am doing this to you. If you're sighing, it's my sigh in you. If you're desiring the divine will, it's my desire in you. You know, if you're praying for this, it's my prayer in you. Again, we are, are totally submissive to God. That, that's what God is looking for, that total submission. Uh, the more that we submit ourselves to God, uh, the, the, the more that we are filled with peace, joy, and happiness. So she wants to reveal to us celestial secrets. Uh, she wants to hear our sigh, her sigh in us. Uh, she says, uh, it is your mother, your mama, that wants her child, that wants to entrust uh, Our Lady's secrets to us, to narrate uh, to us the story that which the Divine Will operated in the Blessed Virgin Mary. See, those that say that, that, that Louisa is greater than Louisa, you know, it's foolish. It's, it's nonsense. Our Lady is the mother and queen, and as she said, she wants the little queen to be there. And she wants us to be linked to Louisa as well. Child of my heart, pay attention to me. That means read. Every day, read the divine will. It is the, my heart, heart of a mother, that wants to pour itself out with her child. I, Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mary, want to tell you my secrets, which I have not revealed to anyone until now. Think about this. Look at all the, the great saints, St. Dominic, who loved Our Lady. You know, all the great saints of the Church. These secrets were not revealed to them. These secrets were only revealed to Louisa and those who read Louisa. So all those that say you don't need to read these writings, you know, that's, you know, uh, I, I, there's only one person that doesn't want you to read the writings. And that's the, the evil one. And uh, he does not want us to know uh, these secrets that Our Lady says, I have not revealed to anyone until now because the hour of God had not yet come. The, the hour of God is when Christ was born. The hour of God is when Christ returns. I mean, that you have to see what Our Lady is saying. Christ is coming back. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ has come, is coming again. Why? Uh, to restore everything to the Father. To bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. So that all his children may live as he originally planned. God originally planned. Wanting to bestow surprising graces upon souls, which God had, has not conceded to in the whole history of the world, God wants to make known the prodigies of the divine fiat and that which the divine will can work in the soul if the soul lets herself be dominated by the divine will. So he says very clearly, uh, this has not been conceded to the whole history of the world. For 6,000 years, this has not been known. Now it's been known. That's why if you go to a priest or a religious who uh, has not read Louisa, they will say, this is nonsense. I've never heard of this. Well, Jesus tells us why through Mary. Uh, the secrets have never been revealed to anyone. Uh, and it is not, God has not conceded this to the whole history of the world. This is not a new revelation. Oh, it's a new revelation. Well, it's not of God. Well, what this is, is the oldest truth. It's the truth it's that God gave to Adam. And now is the time for it to be revealed. It's, we're not talking about revelation. See, there's no new truth for revelation. Everything is, everything is set in revelation. Uh, there's nothing new. What's, what's, what's interesting is this is about sanctification. Now, that's what uh, Archbishop Picheri, when we were with him in Corrado, he said very clearly, he says, there are many knots in the divine will that need to be untied. Now, you think about that. Uh, he says that it's not uh, untruth. It's something that has to be, where, where in sacred scripture, this is what they're doing right now, where in sacred scripture is the third fiat located? Where in, in the dogma and the doctrine do you talk about this third fiat? Where is it? You know, is it implied, is it Im implied in the sacred, scripture, sacred scriptures? 
Is it implicit or explicit? I mean, where Where is it? And that's what the church is doing. It's untying the knots. And that's why who is going to proclaim the divine will is the Pope. I mean, it says that in the, in the, in the uh, third appeal of Louisa. The Holy Father will be the first to live in the fullness of the divine will. And that's... And if you've read anything about what uh, uh, Pope uh, Benedict has been talking about, uh, to me it sounds like he knows this pretty well. Uh, he, he is the Pope that's been placed there for, uh, by God himself in this time that it's being studied in the Vatican. You know, this is nothing's by chance. This is really a glorious time. This is why God wants to place me, Our Lady, in the sight of everyone as model since I, Our Lady, had the great honor to form my whole life of divine will. So again, here, in the sight of everyone, again, got that statue of Our Lady outside? Got that picture of Our Lady in your house? Uh, God wants to place Our Lady in the sight of everyone. And again, we have... Uh, two things I think that are really interesting. Number one is is Our Lady of Guadalupe, uh, and uh, the other thing at Saint uh, in in Fostoria, Fostoria uh, Ohio, is Our Lady of America. Uh, again, this is uh, uh, something that's going to astonish you. What what uh, uh, Saint, uh, Sister Mildred heard Our Lady tell her uh, back in the. Uh, you know, uh, what is it, 50s, uh, 60s, 70s, uh, about about what our, our Lord has promised America, our Lady of America. As a matter of fact, she says that the youth of America will bring will bring purity to the world. I mean, think about that. The youth of America will bring purity to the world. Uh, what does Our Lady say right at the beginning? The, she was pure and holy. Uh, when we pray the uh, the uh, canticle of Zechariah in the morning, it says the three promises to Abraham is to be uh, freed from the enemy when Christ died on the cross, free to worship of God without fear, Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, and to be holy and righteous in God's sight. That's the third promise. That's where we are. What is this holy and righteousness is? This is all about, it's about the divine will. When we link ourselves to Our Lady, when we're one with Our Lady, uh, she begins to mold us. You know, to, we begin to take on uh, the, 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 the features of Jesus. I mean, that, not just physically, but spiritually. He, she, she begins to uh, uh, really form us as she formed Jesus. Now, my child, know that as soon as I was conceived and, and put the divinity in feast, uh, heaven and earth made feasts for me and recognized in me as the queen. I, the Blessed Virgin Mary, remain so identified with my creator, again, the image and likeness of God, that I, Mary, felt I, the Blessed Virgin Mary, was owner of the divine dominions. I, the Blessed Virgin Mary, did not know what separation from my creator God was. She unified one with God, the unity of God. The same divine will which reigned in me reigned in the three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and rendered us inseparable. This is, this is how God, when God breathed into Adam, the, the life of God was brought into, into the lungs of Adam, and Adam lost it. And, and what, does, what does God do? He had his mother in store right from the beginning, the virgin without sin, who would give birth to the child. And she now is inseparable from God. That doesn't mean she's God. But it means that God loves her so much that he's beginning again uh, the, the, the second generation, if you want to say, of the children of light. But while everything was smile and feast between me, Our Lady, and them, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I, the Blessed Virgin Mary, saw that the triune God could not trust me if the triune God did not receive a proof my child, the test is a flag that speaks victory. So again, God has to test us. He has to see what you think. He has to see. He has to hear what you say. He has to uh, again see what you do. He he has to do this. He has to test us. 
So let, let's look over the last 40 years. Who has been faithful, a faithful Catholic? Who is praying the rosary? Who is praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet? Who is wearing the scapular? I mean, he, he's looking. You know, he's given us now uh, uh, through uh, St. Uh, Anna de Francia uh, the little rosary of the divine will. Who, who is doing this? He has to see. Who is making the divine will their everything? So the test places all the goods that God wants to give in safekeeping. The test matures and disposes of the soul for gains of great conquests. I, the Blessed Virgin Mary, I too saw the necessity of this test because I, the Blessed Virgin Mary, wanted to give proof to my Creator God with an act of faithfulness which would cost me, this Mary, the sacrifice of my whole life in exchange for the many seas of divine grace that God has given to me. Oh, how beautiful it is to say, you have loved me and I have loved you. But without the test, it can never be said. So again, God is looking for that love. Now, know, my child, that the divine fiat made me, Our Lady, know the creation of Adam, innocent and holy. For Adam, too, everything was divine happiness. Adam had command over all of creation, and all the elements were obedient, obedient to Adam's wishes. Since the divine will was reigning in Adam, by virtue of the divine will, Adam, too, was inseparable from his creator, God. After God had given him uh, so many goods uh, to him in order to receive one act of faithfulness in Adam, God commanded Adam not to touch one fruit only of the many which were in the terrestrial Eden. This was the proof that God wanted in order to confirm Adam's innocence, Adam's sanctity, Adam's happiness, and to give Adam the right of command over the whole of creation. But Adam was not faithful in the test. And because he was not faithful, God could not trust Adam. So Adam lost command. Adam lost innocence. Adam lost happiness. And one can say that Adam turned the work of creation upside down. Now, know, my child of my heart, that in knowing the grave evils of the human will in Adam and of all his offspring, I, the Blessed Virgin Mary, your celestial mother, though newly conceived, cried bitterly and with hot tears over fallen man. In seeing me cry, the divine will ask me, Our Lady, as proof to surrender my human will to it. The divine fiat said to me, I do not ask of you a fruit, as with Adam. No, no. I ask for your human will, that you will keep it as if you did not have it, under the empire of my divine will which will be your life and will feel confident to make of you whatever the divine will wants. So here we, we see what, what God uh, asked Our Lady. And uh, uh, God, I, I asked Our Lady um, for her human will never to have life. So the Supreme Fiat took the fourth step in my soul, asking me for my will as proof, wanting for my fiat, for my acceptance of such a test. So the fourth step, uh, asking uh, for, the again, the human will as proof, uh, waiting for the fiat, Our Lady's fiat, for the acceptance of such a test. So we'll end there and be back in 15 minutes. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.